It comes from 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, just three short verses. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. I have been very blessed during 35 years of ministry to meet people who have helped to form my faith. You don't get your faith formed necessarily in seminaries. They sort of knock it apart and then put it back together piece by piece. But through the years when you meet the people of the congregations you serve and you learn from their faith and you learn from their experience, that's what really shapes you as a pastor. I cannot stop this morning without giving thanks to those people who have come before me, my great cloud of witnesses, people in my personal life, my family, people in the churches I've served. And this morning, as every Thanksgiving morning, one comes to mind for me, Mr. Bob Kilmer. Mr. Kilmer, known as Sam Ketchum, to those who had known him, was the longtime principal of Hedgesville High School in Hedgesville, West Virginia. I served the Hedgesville United Methodist Church from 1996 until 2008. So I was there and got to know him very well. Unfortunately, during the years I was there, his dementia got worse and worse and worse. To the point that on Sunday morning, after he taught a Sunday school class, and he was so on target when he opened the Bible, but he would go into my office and he would use the phone and he would come out and he'd say, Pastor, I need to go home this morning. Maxine isn't answering the phone. I want to make sure she's okay. Maxine, his wife of over 60 years. Every Sunday morning I had to say, Bob, that's because Maxine died. Then he would go out some mornings and sit in the back seat of his car and wonder why he couldn't drive it home. I had to call his children and say, you need to get your dad to stop driving. But every Sunday, after trying to call his wife, after realizing again that she had left him, he would go and he would sit in the service. And we get to the section that we used to do here, the joys and concerns, by asking you to stand up and share your joys and concerns. I always begin with the joys because I always say, if you can't thank God, you can't go to God with your problems. We're going to thank God first. And I'd say, I'm going to wait, folks, but every Sunday morning, Mr. Kilmer would raise his hand first for the joys. And I'd say, Bob, do you have a joy this morning? Every Sunday it was the same. I am alive, thanks be to God. How many times have we struggled to be thankful and grateful because we take too many things for granted? Or we measure our lives by the things that we don't have or the things that aren't going well. One of my younger colleagues in ministry posted a question on our elders' Facebook page. He said, I'm having a Thanksgiving service this year. It's a tough year to give thanks. Does anyone have any suggestions for a story to tell? The story that I tell so often is one I learned when I was a young pastor coming out of seminary. The story of Martin Rinkert. Martin Rinkert was a German Lutheran pastor during the Thirty Years' War, which was in the early part of the 17th century, the 1600s. Martin Rinkert lived through that war. He lived to watch his colleagues die because not only was there the Thirty Years' War, there was the plague. Martin Rinkert, at the height of the plague, was doing 50 funerals a day, including the funeral for his wife and his son. And he sat down at the end of one of those days, one of those long, grueling days where nothing seemed to have any hope of Christ in it at all. Eight million people died during the Thirty Years' War and the plague. Eight million people. And he sat down and he penned the words that we're going to sing in just a few moments. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices, who wondrous things has done in whom this world rejoices, who from our mother's arm have blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. We will sing that hymn, written nearly 400 years ago this Thanksgiving Day. We'll also sing at the end of the service one written in 1978 by a man named Henry Smith. When people tell me they don't like new hymns, they, they like what's familiar and comfortable, I said, well, if we do that, if we only do that, 
what we're doing is we're saying to the people that God is inspiring to write music today that you should stop right now because we've had enough. 1978, Henry Smith was a seminary student. He had just graduated. He was having trouble finding a call, and his eyesight started to degenerate to the point that he became legally blind. And what does he sit down and write? Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. Now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. We have had a blessed life in this nation. We've been blessed with freedom. We've been blessed with opportunity. We've been blessed with material goods, and if we don't have them or the ability to generate them, usually someone comes alongside us from the church or through programs by the federal and state governments to help those who are in need. We prepared Thanksgiving meals here that were distributed. We collect food for the Cockeysville Food Pantry. We were participating in an Angel Tweak project, and we sent this week 47 shoe boxes to Operation Christmas Child. We share what we have with those who are in need. But I think we've become a little bit spoiled because we're used to instant gratification. People tell me my computer's slow. It took me 30 seconds to connect to a website. And I'm thinking, how about the days when you went to the library and went through the card catalog and looked up things and wrote them down and went to the library and pulled books and wrote notes by hand? And I think of those people of what we call the greatest generation who came through a depression, who ate what they could when they could, only then to enter into a world war that went on for years. So, if you want to know what thankfulness looks like, look at those who persevered. Look at Martin Rinkert. Look at Henry Smith. I hope we'll still be singing their hymns to God in another 400 years, along with the hymns written by those who come after who understand that even in a pandemic, even in a time of loss, even in a time of great need and suffering, there is always, always, always something to be thankful for. I know lately I've talked a lot about my husband, my late husband Richard, in worship services. I do that from time to time because when we get close to the holidays, I am more aware of his loss. And I remember when we went on a trip together, we went to Myrtle Beach, which was the last vacation we took, because someone in my congregation came to me and handed me the keys to his condominium and said, the only reason you won't take these is if you're too stubborn and proud. And we made the trip. It was a little too long for him, and he was exhausted when we got there. We didn't have much money, which is why our folks decided to share this great gift with us so we could have a little bit of R&R time together at the beach. And we were out one day in a store, and we saw a plaque that said there was always, always, always something to be thankful for. We had taken peanut butter and bread with us to eat. We went out to eat one time when we were there. But we bought that plaque, and it hung in our house, and we looked up that every day. Because in spite of all that we were losing, we had each other. It's not always easy. But God will be with us no matter what we face. God will come to us again and again and lift us up and buoy up our spirits and make us whole. For that, we give thanks. Mr. Kilmer has been with Christ for years now, along with his wife, Maxine. They're united together in the kingdom that has no end. They are at the great Thanksgiving feast that has no end, restored and whole and made new in their Savior. But the word Eucharist, another word for Holy Communion, means just that, thanksgiving. And while I really have to stretch my theological understanding, I know that so many of you cannot gather and did not have Holy Communion for so long has been heartbreaking for me. And so this morning, if you're worshiping with us from home and you have bread and you have juice, even if it's orange juice and toast, it doesn't matter. But we will gather soon and we will share what Christ has to offer us. We cannot be together physically right now, but that will change. This will be behind us. But may God always find us in every circumstance, every situation, 
rejoicing in the presence of God, praying continually for one another and for the world, and giving thanks in all things, because that is God's will for us in Christ Jesus. To the glory of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.